the Papists are taking over. Roman Catholics coming to power in any country, politically speaking, is a bad thing. Um, as a Bible-believing preacher, I believe in liberty of conscience. Uh, if somebody wants to worship whatever, however, that's up to them as long as they aren't threatening other people. Roman Catholicism is not that way. The Second Vatican Council makes it look like they are, like they're okay with separated brethren, but um, it's a smokescreen is all that, all that it is. Every Catholic out there is loyal first to the Vatican, their church, in other words, secondly to their country. You're going to see that here in just a minute or two with the Timothy Dolan here, Cardinal Dolan in New York, there in his papal residence there. And um, you can see the American flag with the gold fringe. It's a military ensign. It's not the flag of our the citizenry of, of this country. It is a military ensign. And over here on this side, you can't see it right now, but you'll see the Vatican flag. He's flying the flag of a foreign country, a foreign power. And they are subservient to the Vatican first and foremost. But I just want to go through this thing. This was the uh, Al Smith dinner thing last night. They, they couldn't have it because of the baloney virus thing. But just a few very key uh, pertinent things in here um, that would have just frightened Christians to death in the past. Um, and now it's just kind of, eh, you know, and most of the church buildings, the satanic church buildings, the pastors in them are just going to be totally quiet about this. They'll tell you to vote for Trump or whatever else. It's just, it's disgusting to see how things have gotten so bad. And if you've seen my study that I did on the 100% sure word of prophecy, here's supporting evidence for that. So let's play this. Amen. Well, for those of you just joining us, welcome. Welcome to the 75th annual Alfred E. Smith Memorial Foundation Dinner. What's the background here? Well, no one here this evening is old enough to remember the 1928 presidential election, except maybe former Vice President Joe Biden. In that year, the immensely popular four-term governor of New York, Al Smith, became the first Catholic nominee for the high office of president. Sadly, the campaign was sullied by anti-Catholic, anti-Irish, anti-immigrant bigotry, and Al Smith lost big time. Yeah, anti-Catholic bigotry. Uh, no, it's called saved people fought off the papist devils like this one right here. Okay, saved people understand what Catholics coming to power means. My, how we've fallen. Just, just going to zip forward here. They go through a bunch of stuff and whatever else, show things, and then this evil-looking woman with her devil eyes comes out and then they have a old uh, Biden here. Let's listen to his. He actually brings up the thing of the meeting the Jesuit Pope. They're just rubbing it in people's faces. Let's let's watch this. At the Tuesday night debate, but this time with the power of divine intervention, the Cardinal has been granted the power to mute the speakers when necessary. So with that, we are going to begin with Vice President Joseph Biden. If elected, Vice President Biden would certainly make Al Smith proud, becoming our nation's second Catholic president. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vice President Joseph Biden. Thank you, Mary, for that introduction. Your Eminence, Cardinal Dolan, and everyone at the site of the Al Smith Memorial Foundation, thank you all for having me and for supporting the charities that care for New York's children and families in need in the name of a good man who believed that faith without works is dead. For we know Alfred E. Smith. Not written to Christians, it's written to Jews. Twelve tribes which were scattered abroad in James chapter 2. But typical papist propaganda. By what he did. I know there's disappointment that the dinner tonight couldn't continue as normal for us to sit together and put politics aside for a night, because these are difficult times for our country. A pandemic, a recession, a reckoning on race, a changing climate. With each crisis, our faith is tested. Faith in our institutions, in one another, 
in truth, in science, and reason. We have to guard. Well, what about faith in Jesus Christ? They're stupid. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, don't mention that. Continue. Ourselves from rationalizing that this is normal and from numbing us to the pain and suffering of so many fellow Americans. You know, too many people woke up this morning, went to the kitchen table, and there was an empty chair where just a days ago or weeks ago or a month ago, a loved one sat talking, laughing, sharing their dreams, and now they're gone. Yeah, that's normal reality. Okay. And there's things that are far deadlier than the baloney virus. Continue. Lost to a relentless and unforgiving virus. I know for me, my Catholic faith has helped me through the darkness as I've had to bury pieces of my soul deep in the earth and eventually find... Uh, uh, really? Your Catholic faith has helped you through the darkness and things. How? Does Catholicism give you any assurance of, of eternity in heaven? Well, if you die in a state of grace, I guess, you know, well, kind of, but you don't want to be the sin of presumption, you know, to actually say that you're going to go to heaven when you die. You know, just nonsense. Continuing here. These guys, Catholicism to these guys is a political tool. That's all it is. They have no faith in Jesus Christ. Found purpose to live a life worthy of those I lost. And throughout my life in public service, I've been guided by the tenets of Catholic social doctrine that cuts across all confessional faiths. What you do to the least among us, you do unto me. We have an obligation to one another. We cannot serve ourselves at the expense of others. We have a response. <laughs> cannot serve ourselves at the expense of others. Hello. Uh, yeah, politicians serve themselves for sale to the highest bidder. Continuing. Ability to future generations. And that's the charge before us today. I know it's hard to see it right now. Our problems are so systemic. The losses are so catastrophic. At times it feels easy to say, we're done. It's over. What's the point? But the American people don't give up. There is no quit in America. Mark my words. <laughs> One day we'll look back in awe not at how far we fell, but how fiercely we fought back as a country. And that sense of hope and possible. Oh, well, you know, if you actually read the Bible, you would see that, no, there is no Western superpower called America in the end times. But let's not confuse things with the scriptures that Jesus Christ gave. This ability reminds me of the first time I met Pope Francis in 2013, when I had the privilege of attending his inauguration at the Vatican. When I greeted him, he said, Mr. Vice President, you're always welcome here. He was really sending a message to the world to put out a welcome sign on the front door of our church. Two years later, President Obama and I welcomed him at the White House. At that same moment, we shared a sense of hope and possibility together. And for me, it came at a very personal moment, a very tough time in the life of my family. Our son, Bo, had just died a few months earlier. Pope Francis took the time to meet with my entire family to help us see the light through the darkness. I and what was that light through the darkness? Did he preach the gospel? Of course not. Pope Francis doesn't know what the gospel is. Continue. We live in an amazing country. We all live in an amazing country. Where an Irish Catholic kid like me from Scranton, Pennsylvania, would one day befriend the Jesuit Pope. Why did he have to say Jesuit Pope? Why couldn't he just say the Pope? Yeah, these guys are all tied into the Jesuits. I say it, I prove it. Eh, whatever. <laughs> you haven't woken up yet, can't help you. But that's who we are as a country, where anything is possible when we care for one another. When we look out for one another, when we keep the faith, may God bless you all, and may God bless America. Why? Why would God bless you all, and why would God bless this wicked, disgusting nation? Just sickening.
and may God protect our troops. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice President. Thank you for making the time. I know it's a very busy week, and it's very special to hear from you. And now we're going to turn to our next speaker. It feels like a lifetime ago that the Cardinal and I sat between Secretary Clinton and President Trump. Four years ago. As Cardinal Dolan said, it was the iciest place on the planet. This year, President Trump told us he wants to toast, not roast. Let's hope for that. The president might not publicly discuss his faith very often, but I have heard it said that he alone has gotten more liberals to pray to God than any other president or cardinal in recent history. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of the United States of America, Donald Trump. It is a profound honor to address the 75th annual Al Smith Dinner. For generations, this wonderful event has been a revered institution in New York and New York life. I fondly remember attending with my father a long time ago. I was a young man, but never forgot it. This organization's incredible tradition of Catholic charity exemplifies the very best, not only of this city, but of this country. I want to thank Cardinal Dolan, a very special man, for his extraordinary stewardship of the Archdiocese and for his deep dedication to God and to our nation. I also want to thank him for all of the help he's given me. And so deep dedication to God and our nation. Aha, uh -huh. no, to the Vatican. Okay, his dedication isn't to this country. And his God is not Jesus Christ. It's a pagan trinity. Continuing. So many things and so many different ways. Thank you very much, Cardinal. We very much appreciate it. Let me also thank Mary Erdos and the entire Alfred E. Smith Memorial Foundation. As you know, tonight's Al Smith dinner is unlike any other, sadly. Our country and the entire world have been struck with a once-in-a-lifetime global pandemic. China shouldn't have let it happen, but it did. When the virus came in from China, we saw New Yorkers respond with a seam grit and tenacity, courage, and selflessness that have always defined this city that we love so much. Doctor, you know, if you live in New York City, you should really be insulted by these guys. If you're aware, if you're awake to what goes on, they've been just they've been just destroying New York City and killing people there all the time with 9/11 and the firefighters that went in and breathed in the toxic chemicals and stuff, and then they don't get health care coverage and these guys don't care, you know, tenacity and grit. Uh -huh, yeah, they're trying to kill people there. Laying them off like crazy, you know, defunding the police. When they, we care about you, tenacity and grit. Yeah. Doctors and nurses worked around the clock. The heroes of the New York PD, NYPD, we love them and they endorsed me. So I like them even more, but they are great. New York's finest. And the FDNY, the bravest. They are the bravest. They're great. I know them all very well. And other first responders risk their lives to save others. And of course, the Catholic community and the men and women of the New York Archdiocese answered the call and frankly answered it like nobody else could. In Catholic school. How? How? Was the gospel preached according to the scriptures? Did they tell anybody how to be healed nutritionally like the scriptures? recommend God's methods of healing no of course not schools hospital shelters soup kitchens and food pantries you served with the supreme devotion to your fellow citizens the Alfred E Smith Memorial Foundation made a historic eight million dollar gift to support the children and the families of New York thank you you showed the world the essence of the Catholic faith. I've known about it for a long time. I lived right next to a magnificent Catholic church. As Jesus Christ said in the gospel, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. As president, I want to thank the Catholic community for the... Uh, that's not the scripture quote there, but, you know, when it's talking about loving one another, it's talking about saved people. All right. Catholics are not saved. Magnificent generosity you showed in America's hour of need. We mourn for all of those who lost a loved one. And in their memory, we will defeat the virus. Through advances in treatment, we have reduced the fatality rate by 85% since just April. 
we are on track to develop a no, no actually it's it's not been dangerous from day one the whole thing's been a scam from the very beginning treatments and stuff to reducing the, the damage by 85 percent no it's called nobody's getting it because it's not dangerous right the few people that died probably it was actually the flu and they've been faking other deaths you know inflating the numbers to make it look really bad it's not that bad if you understand what's really going on continue and distribute a vaccine before the end of the year and maybe substantially before and I just want to say that the end of the pandemic is in sight, and next year will be one of the greatest years in the history of our country. How? How? See, they're just lying to people. And here's the point. You say, why are you even making a video like this? The point is that the, these guys like Trump and Biden, whatever else, they're coming out, they're just lying right to people's faces. They're openly in bed with the Catholic Church, and the churches out there, the, the supposed Christians are going to be silent and they're going to tell people to vote for Trump. That's the point here. From the very beginning of our republic, Catholics have uplifted and enriched our nation beyond measure. Catholics like Charles Carroll helped secure American independence. Women like St. Elizabeth Ann Seton founded a movement that created thousands of schools and lifted children out of poverty. And the great Al Smith, the original happy warrior, that's what he was, he was a happy warrior, I know it well. I consider myself to be a happy warrior, but it's not so easy at these times. But he was a happy warrior of American politics. He spent his life fighting for hardworking Americans and battling the anti-Catholic prejudice that you see even today. Come uh, anti-Catholic prejudice? You see? Oh, he's not a pro he's not a, a, a Catholic. He's a Protestant. Uh -huh. Sure, yeah, right. And watch what he says. And remember this guy in the first the first Al Smith dinner, you know, that he was in four years ago. He said that he's going to end anti-Catholic sentiment or whatever else. I did a video on the thing. And yet, Christians professing Christians. Oh, I think Trump's a great man. I think it, people a hundred years ago wouldn't have agreed with you. Have you gotten stronger spiritually in a hundred years? Just disgust me. But you know, he's gonna blame anti-Catholic people, you're a Democrat. Watch. Coming out of the Democrat Party. Today this amazing group continues that proud tradition of faithful service. Your work reminds us of an essential truth. In this country, civil society and especially our religious institutions are an essential foundation of American freedom. A nation is strong. Then why'd you let them get shut down? Because of Catholics and frankly, people of all faiths. That is why as president, one of my top priorities is to defend religious liberty and the cherished role of faith and faith-based organizations in our national life. Yeah, but you uh, allowed the church buildings to be shut down because of the baloney virus. <laughs> Who's going to defend religious freedom? Uh -huh. They just took it away for a few months. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. To protect your God-given rights, I was recently honored to nominate one of our most brilliant legal minds, Judge Amy Coney Barrett, to the United States Supreme Court, and that was an honor indeed. She is a proud graduate of the University of Notre Dame Law School where her professor, one of the most respected anywhere in the country, said she was the single greatest student he has ever had in his class. We will not stand for any attacks against Judge Barrett's faith. Anti-Catholic bigotry has absolutely no place in the United States of America. Anti-Catholic bigotry has absolutely no place in the United States of America. Hmm. Where's the outrage that's going to come from that statement right there? Where's the outrage from the Baptist preachers, from the Pentecostals, the whatever, go down through the supposed, you know, Protestant type denominations? Where's the outrage? They're going to be out voting for this man. To say anti-Catholic bigotry has no place in the United States. It predominates in the Democrat Party and we must do something immediately about it like a Republican win.
and let's make it a really big one, to support the noble mission of Catholic schools, my administration is working to advance school choice. It was my great honor to help the Catholic Church with its schools. They needed hundreds of millions of dollars nationwide, and I got it for them. Nobody else. I got it for them. I hope you remember that on November 3rd, but I got it for them. And it was an honor to do it. I did it at the request of Cardinal Dolan and others of your leaders. They really needed it. We took care of that situation. Very important. We are once again standing with Catholic charities and health care providers, such as the Little Sisters of the Poor. We've been with them all the way in this long fight. We are fighting for Catholic adoption agencies and fighting hard. And we are defending the sacred right to life. Remember that when you vote. That's so important and so important to the Supreme Court. Every child, born and unborn, is made in the holy image of God. Few institutions in history have done more for New York. Not true. Um, you're made in the image of Adam. Adam was made in the image of God. But why well, squabble over details? I guess I'm being anti-Catholic by, you know, speaking against a pro-Catholic president. Yeah. More for America or more for people of the world than the Catholic Church. From the parishes of this city came the soldiers who fought to end slavery, the workers who raised up the towering skyline of Manhattan, the chaplains who landed on the beaches of Guadalcanal, the nuns who marched for civil rights, and the police officers and firefighters who we love so much who ran into the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. Now more than ever, our nation needs a renewal of the values that this organization promotes and that the Catholic faithful live out each and every day in peace. We love the Catholic people. We love the Catholic religion, and above all, we respect it greatly. Shouldn't there be red flags going off? Where are the uh, Protestants out there? As president, I will always support you in your effort to serve our fellow citizens and to lift up all humanity. I will protect the Catholic Church, and I will defend the rights of religious believers of every race, religion, color, and creed. Thank you once again to the Al Smith Memorial Foundation. God bless you, God bless New York, and God bless America. Yeah, and there you see this monster, this sick devil. There he is, right beside the Vatican flag. That's who he's truly loyal to. So, just wanted to do this video. Brother, let me know about this whole dinner thing. And uh, there's not going to be any outcry among the conservative, you know, Baptist types and whatever else. They'll go right on, they'll go out and vote for the man and whatever else. Catholic Church has taken over this country. And um, I'm prepared to die. It doesn't matter to me. That, that's, that's not important. I, I serve Jesus Christ um, and I will never be a Roman Catholic, ever. Um, whatever, it doesn't matter. But, you know, just a, a, wanted to do this video just to confirm that the King James Bible is correct and what prophecies are there that the Catholic Church will come to power um, absolute truth so you know if you want to be a coward and go along with the whole system and, and Trump Trump he's our man whatever go ahead um, as for me and my house we will serve the Lord and we will not ever join Roman Catholicism period